It looks like we're back for another watercolor color video. And today's gonna be all about the greatest hits of what I consider to be one of my all-time favorite brands, which is Windsor & Newton. And it's going to be a rundown of what I consider to be the top 10 most iconic signature and honestly the best colors for this particular brand. Hi artists and welcome back to my channel. My name is Margot Halleck and I'm a professional commercial artist. Today's video is going to be a countdown of my top 10 Windsor and Newton colors. These are going to be, in my opinion, the most iconic colors and best in class for this brand. This list was really hard to make because in general, I don't think that you can go wrong with any of the colors from Windsor and Newton. They're just that good. But there are a few that, in my opinion, feel very unique to the brand, whether that's the quality or richness that the paint delivers, or just the uniqueness of that particular color compared to other brands on the market. And those are the colors that I'm going to highlight and talk about today. So without further ado, let's start the countdown of the top 10 Windsor and Newton watercolor colors, starting with number 10. Number 10 on my list has to be the color indigo, which may not be the most exciting color compared to other flashier or more exotic colors. However, it is a workhorse color. And in my opinion, the indigo from Windsor and Newton is best in its class. It has the depth and dark values that you would expect from an indigo without losing the beautiful, rich saturation that makes so many other indigos look dull and gray. Indigo is useful not only in its pure state, but it's also an incredible color to use for mixing. I get my best earth tones and blacks from mixing indigo with other warmer colors, and it gives me a lot of flexibility to play around and come up with some really exciting color schemes. Number nine. Number nine is Rose Doré. And Rose Doré has a beautiful luminescent quality to it. I've spoken about this color over and over again on a ton of other videos, but what I really love in this particular formulation is that it never reads as too pinky or salmon, and it isn't muddy and brown either. Like the name suggests, it's the perfect rose gold. Like if you were to walk into a jewelry store and find a really beautiful rose gold medal, that doesn't steer to pink or to gold. It's kind of in the middle of the two and that actually makes it quite neutral, which in turn makes it very versatile to work with. I use it a lot in skin tones, but it can also be used to warm up elements in a landscape or architectural painting. Or if you're trying to create reflections of light from sunset or golden hour, this color could be a very useful color to have in your palette. Next up on the list is number eight, which is Venetian red. I love Venetian red and Windsor & Newton's does not disappoint. Historically, Venetian red was a red earth color used in Italian Renaissance paintings, so it definitely has a sense of history and culture to it. Windsor & Newton's Venetian red in particular is really beautiful and doesn't get too brown. It maintains a beautiful, vivid, warm red, and to me makes an excellent color for creating all sorts of skin tones. So the paint itself is on the opaque side, and that also makes it really great for building deep tones. I've definitely used this on things like stems, trees, trunks and branches, and they really help to warm up whatever it is that you're trying to add darker values to. Anyway, Windsor & Newton's version of this color is gorgeous and definitely a must have. Number seven, Windsor & Newton's Cerulean Blue. Now I've tried Cerulean Blues from a lot of brands and something that comes up over and over again is granulation. And Cerulean is kind of notorious for granulation in general. So it's a nice surprise when a paint comes along in this particular color and doesn't do that. I don't wanna say that I'm anti-granulation or anything. I'm okay with it in a more muted, earthy, um, or in jewel tones, um, but I'm much less tolerant of it when it comes to the color cerulean. And by the way, granulation just means that the paint creates a grainy, nearly sandy finish when it dries. I use cerulean a lot for painting skies or large washes, and I really need something that applies very, very smoothly. It's not going to be the most opaque color, but then again, most ceruleans aren't. But what it will give you is a wonderfully even wash when you're doing large washes of color. 
So like I said, if you're doing a sky or an ocean or a watercolor map, or just about anything with a large surface that's gonna have a lot of cerulean, this one is definitely one to try. Number six. Number six is Windsor Violet, also known as Dioxazine Violet. This one I love for the same reasons that I fell in love with Windsor and Newton's Indigo. It's a terrific workhorse color that doesn't sacrifice the darkness of its deepest values for saturation. Saturation. Just like with the indigo, it doesn't get muddy or gray. It's rich and violet through and through. So your painting still has beautiful brilliance, even when you add those darker tones that this color also delivers. And I often reach for this one as an alternative to black. It's that dark, but it gives your painting a little glimmer of cool purple tones peeking through underneath those shadows, which I think are just gorgeous. And just like with indigo, you can really leverage mixing this color to make some truly amazing earth and neutral colors. We're halfway through our list with number five on the countdown, and that is Windsor & Newton's Quinacridone Magenta. Quinacridone is such a powerhouse color, and having tried this magenta by quite a few others, including Sennelier, Daniel Smith, Holbein, Mugello, among many others, I can confidently say that Windsor & Newton's delivers um, the best iteration of this color. It's a gorgeous, rich magenta that feels bright and saturated, but still looks incredibly sophisticated. A lot of times I feel like quinacridone magenta can either get a little dull or way too vivid and artificial looking. And so Windsor & Newton seems to have struck the perfect balance between looking warm and natural, but not getting too electric. And it makes me think of the powdered pigments and dyes that you would see from the streets of Raja in, in India, or a juicy berry from a mulberry bush. It's just a fantastic color all around. Number four on the list is another workhorse color that Windsor & Newton does exceptionally well. Um, do you see a pattern here? I'm all about finding colors that are not just really spectacular to look at, but that you can also use time and time again for many different uses and applications. And what could be more versatile than a nice, unique sap green? And Windsor & Newton's permanent sap green fits the bill to a T. The thing that I find most appealing about sap green, and the same holds true for most of the range of colors in this brand, is the smoothness it has when applied applied to paper and mixed with other colors. If you're looking for a lot of granulation, this will not be your best bet or your favorite brand, but if you're on the lookout for a color that has really beautiful mossy tones and it's incredibly easy to blend and to work with, this one is a phenomenal choice. Obviously it will appeal to anyone doing natural subjects like plants and florals, but thinking a step beyond that, sap green is a color that plays nice with so many others. It has a complexity and earthiness to it, which pretty much guarantees that it won't steal the spotlight from the other colors that you've got going on in your painting. We're down to our top three. Next up is Windsor Orange Red Hue. This orange is pure, it's vibrant, it's juicy, it's incredibly smooth and buttery in its application. There's something bold and unapologetic about this particular orange without being garish or tacky. And that's kind of the problem that I have with a lot of primary oranges from some of the other brands is that they kind of end up looking very artificial and fake. And this one gives off more of a storied and even a more historical kind of feel. Think of still life paintings by Paul Cezanne or Louis XIV teens orangery in the palace of Versailles. It's an orange that captures the jewel tones of a brilliant sunset, but somehow still has a sense of history and time. And to me, this is really the ultimate orange. Number two. Next on our top signature Windsor & Newton colors list is Windsor Yellow Deep, a brilliant bright color that can easily run the gamut between a golden orange and a sunflower yellow. In a deeper concentration, I can visualize the golden tones you would find in the honeycombs of bees. Water it down some and you can get the pale yellows you would find on the fluffy feathers of a chick or a duckling. It's definitely a warmer yellow and the breadth of the range within that one color makes it wonderfully versatile to use. In fact, add just a dash of any brown to it, like an umber or a sepia, and you can get yourself beautiful remixes of your typical yellow or gold 
gold ochres and sienna. And finally, the number one Windsor & Newton color that I think is just a signature of this range is Windsor Blue Red Shade. This one is just so special and it has this beautiful shine to it that makes it so sophisticated and reminds me of, you know, a sapphire jewel from the windows of Tiffany's. So no matter what angle you look at it and no matter how pale or how dark the color is on your page, it just refracts the light and has this vivid quality to it that I think looks so dimensional and so sophisticated. It can be used for everything from a sky blue to a nautical or even an ocean scene. It makes a terrific blue for a ballerina costume and makes the most memorable blue for decorative designs. And that's something that makes me reach for it time and time again. And honestly, that I can find a million things to use it for. So now I'm gonna ask you what your favorite Windsor & Newton colors are. Do you agree with my top 10 list or are there other colors that you find more iconic and unique to the Windsor & Newton brand? And I'm also thinking of making this into maybe a series and visiting my top 10 signature colors from Daniel Smith or Sennelier. So let me know what you think of that idea and what brand you think I should do next. Next. As always, artists, thank you so much for watching and for joining me every week on these art videos, and I will see you next time.